Hey guys, my name is Andrew Pecoraro from Pex Metal Picks, and I'm here with Anthony from After the Burial. Alright man, so the first question that everybody has is about Justin and what happened with him. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, see, yeah, you know, it's it's one of those questions that we, we know we're going to get asked a lot, you know? So, I think out of respect for the family, like, we probably don't want to talk about it. And in reality everybody's guess is as good as ours like we don't we don't really know what happened like it's just it's just sad it's just like it would what, what happened broke everyone's hearts so you know um it's just one of those questions that i think it would be too tough to answer like because it's just it's just an open-ended question there's no answer you know so yeah yeah that's uh that's a tough one to answer all right um so move into your the first single you've released since that happened, Lost in the Static. When I first heard it, it reminded me a lot of the intro from Cursing at Kenaten. Is yeah. it kind of like a part two, like stylistically at least? Um, you know, you'd have to ask Trent about that, I think. Um I got the vibe a little bit too, but it, it had its own it had its own feeling and and I remember hearing the song. Uh, I remember because you know I live I don't live in Minnesota so I live far away so like I remember getting the song and being like okay okay cool like <laughs> immediately I was like oh shit all right so um, yeah the song ended up just what it is its own thing but I, I get the vibe that like some people get the same vibe from it but also it's like its own little cool thing so I don't know um, I, I don't know if it's a part two or anything yeah. that's a Trent question for sure um, yeah, I just see like a lot of the YouTube comments um, are calling it like Pharaoh Core. Yeah. And uh, I remember having that same kind of like Egyptian sort of vibe from Cursing at Kenaten too. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it does. <laughs> I mean, you hear it, you're like, okay, it's got that same vibe. And, and uh, it definitely, when I was listening to it, I, I pictured like pharaohs and shit, or like <laughs> I pictured like mummies and sand and like, you know, sandstorms and shit. But actually, the song is like, has its own like vibe, like lyrically, it's like, it has nothing to do with like yeah. Egyptians or pharaohs, but it's, yeah. but when you first hear it, like the first thought that's provoked is that like in your head, like you start picturing that shit. So I get it. You know? Yeah. Um, so next question is, is about um, right after the thing with Justin happened, you guys pulled off of the summer slaughter tour um, to take some time, obviously, and then pretty quickly pick this one up with the faceless and rings of Saturn. Um, how has it been being back on the road? Are you guys glad that you decided to get back out there? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously, like, as we're, we're normal human beings, so, like, we're just like everybody else. Like, we, we were grieving, and uh, we didn't want to be a spectacle on Summer Slaughter Tour, and uh, we, it was too soon. We were crushed. So I think when we decided to do the tour, um, even before we, you know, we had those thoughts about like, well, do we, what do we do? Do, do we stop? You know, like, and it's, it, and these are, I feel like these are um, questions that anyone would ask themselves given our situation. So um, we, we talked about it, but we, I think at least for me, I know for me and I think for the band and as well, like what whatever defeated Justin, whatever it was, we didn't want it to defeat the rest of us. And we didn't want it to just we didn't it beat him and i didn't want it to to beat the rest of us because i feel like that wouldn't that's not what he would have wanted so i think we just we just we decided to, to just try it and keep going and in this tour i think obviously the first show was incredibly hard and the home show in minnesota was it was a very hard show too and it's it's not going to be the same but um 
I think it's been a good thing for us. It's sort of been like closure, like as a, a little bit of closure, and, and we're still still trying to get used to being without him. And and, and I'll, we never will. We never ever will. But um, I think the choice to continue on was the right one. Yeah. Well, now today's the end of the tour. Do you think now that you've been out there, are you looking to get back out there again, or do you think you'll take another sort of rest period? Um, I mean, we're, we're going to have the normal um, rest, you know, like it's December, so holidays are coming, New Year's. We hate touring in the winter because it's, uh, it's scary and cold, <laughs> but um, we definitely have some offers in the air right now, and, and uh, we'll be back on the road early, early next year. Okay. Um, I know we kind of already talked about this before, but um, about new material, is there a new album in the works? What, uh, what's that looking like behind the scenes? Uh, yeah, we have a whole album ready. It's uh, it's done. We actually just uh, it's a little chilly. Yeah, we just feeling, uh, yeah. <laughs> we Some just shivers. <laughs> yeah, we just um finished uh we just finished all the artwork and uh pro proofread the lyrics and did our thank yous and everything. So it's it's ready. It's it's how it's many songs? Gonna, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say how many right, songs. Right. It's it's a it's like forty something minutes long, so it's like maybe forty five or forty seven minutes long. So yeah, because that's when I was getting ready for this, I was looking at past material and stuff, and it seems like ten songs has been the max. But they've always like all the albums have been between forty and forty five minutes, which is still up there with that's a good amount of time. Yeah, you know we always get. It's hard for us to write songs, you know, and I understand that like these bands pump out 10, 12 track albums and I was like, damn, like, good for you guys, and, you know, and like we tr we try to get up there to 10 because that's like everyone's like, why can't you guys just do 10 songs? And we're like, we're trying, you know, but like these songs are, you know, it's really hard for Trent and it was not not really hard. It's just they put so much effort into what they're writing there so they think about every single thing like every yeah. like they don't they're not lazy they're not lazy about anything that they write and, and justin and trent were always super meticulous about that so um and the duration is always up there with bands you know 40 45 minutes like dude i've seen like guys standard, with, yeah i've seen guys with like more yeah yeah tw they have 12 songs in the record and i'm like and then i go and look to see how much time and it's like 38 minutes I'm yeah. like well, we have eight and ours is 44 minutes like yeah so you know, yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, so now that it's pretty much all written, I guess I can I ask like, are you guys experimenting with any kind of new stuff on there, or is it sort of like the classic after the burial that everybody's gonna love? Um, this album, I think Trent and the guys were just like, you know, fuck it, and just would he just. I think he was just like, I'm just gonna write what I like to listen to, what I'd like to hear. And I think um, we didn't have any like, oh, we're gonna make it sound like this, or we're gonna try this, or anything. We didn't have any set plans. We just, we just went for it. And and for me, lyrically, everything was just like, you know, we sat in the studio for a month and wrote the record, or and um, everything was just um, off the top of my head. You know, like I didn't have any set. I didn't want any influence. I just wanted to go into it fresh. And I think. I think hopefully that worked for us in the, in the long run. So, I yeah. mean, we'll see. We'll see what everyone thinks of it soon enough. Um, okay, so going back a little bit to, like, previous kinds of stuff, um, you guys remastered three of the songs from After the Burial's first album. What made you guys want to do that? Was that kind of like a Sumerian thing that they wanted you to do? Or how did you decide that? Oh, man, you know, I can't remember if it was Sumerian or if it was, um, I think Justin and Trent were talking about doing it, and then um, we, we were talking about doing an EP, and I think, yeah, I, I can't, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to recall whose idea it was, but we definitely wanted to do it. We didn't want to do the whole record, because I even I still think that record's super special. Like, like Nick, the, the original vocalist, I thought sounded rad. Like, that's such a, like, it was so cool to me. Like, I remember hearing that back when it came out, and I was like, this is 
awesome, you know. So like, we didn't want to like, we, it wasn't like one of the things like where it was like a blemish on the band and like we wanted to redo everything. It was just like, let's just revisit it and like it'll be kind of it'll be a cool thing to do, you know, like. Yeah, because you guys ended up redoing all of Rare for him with you doing the vocals too. So you've almost redone the vocals for all of the songs. Um, yeah. Was that sort of on purpose or? Rare form was actually just supposed to be aspiration because we had some, I, I think it had something to do with like Guitar Hero or something. Oh yeah? And they didn't, they like the label wanted my voice to be on it. Oh. And um, we went and tracked uh, aspiration and sent it to the label and the label was like, uh, yeah, we want you to go ahead and just do the whole record. And nice. we were like, okay, cool. And then we went and tracked the whole record. So that was kind of, I felt a little flattered for that, um, on that part, you know, but. What uh, ended up happening with Nick, the first vocalist of the band, and how did you get chosen to replace him? Okay, so here's the thing that a lot of people uh, mis like are mistaken on this. So there was Nick, Wellner, which was the original vocalist. He was on Forging a Future Self. Nick, um, before the band got signed, opted out of the band. He's like, look guys, love you. I'm just like, this is not what something I wanted. I can't commit to this. So they got another guy that was on rare form. So, and everyone thinks he's the original singer, but he actually isn't. Nick is the original singer. And apparently, I don't know the whole story because obviously I wasn't in the band, but apparently it just didn't work out. And they found out pretty quick that it wasn't going to work out right after the album came out. And uh, it just so happened um, they were playing an instrumental set on a Thrash and Burn tour. And they came into San Francisco, which is where I'm from. And uh, they called up my buddy and, and, and my buddy was like oh no Anthony will sing for you guys and I'm like who am I singing for he's like do you want to sing for After the Barrel tomorrow I was like tomorrow he's like yeah dude and I was like I don't know any songs I was like all right let's try it and I, I did it and then they came over to my house that night we had already been friends before this so like we already knew each other and uh, I ended up filling in on the Cleansing the Nation tour with Suicide Silence and Mirror Beneath the Massacre and Architects and one thing led to another and they asked, they asked me to join the band and the rest is history so so just to be clear it is nick's vocals on the original rare form right no it's grant okay so there's grant there's a guy grant Dude, i feel like so many people i mean even i obviously didn't yeah, know about so, this guy because i was looking at all the youtube things and everybody's like comparing your vocals to nick's on rare form but it's not even him on that it's not even nick no it's this guy grant and um nick and i are actually like good friends nick Sang on Wolves Within. He sang okay. in, uh, on uh, what the, what the, I can't even remember the name of the song. Um, I can't even remember the name of it. That's, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble for that one. No worries. But yeah, he sang on one of the songs. Okay. Uh, Virga. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, dude. I didn't even realize. Do you just need to go on YouTube and like set all those people right? Because so many people <laughs> are like talking shit about like you or Nick. Like it's not even him on there. Well, everyone's, you know, that's the thing about the internet. I don't even read those comments anymore because people that go and, and they, you know, they want to compare. I mean, it's always a matter of opinion. Yeah. So it's like you can't be like, you're an idiot because your opinion is this. You know, it's like, well, some people are always a matter of fact. Like, no, this is what really happened. Like, he did this. And it's like, well, no, you don't know the full story. But it's like, man, I would probably spend the rest of my life correcting everyone on the internet you know yeah. so i just it's whatever you know it's just some people don't know and, and we'll find out sooner or later for the record the people on the internet are idiots because anthony kills it live i'm just gonna put that out there Thank if you, you haven't seen him like once you see him then you know i try i, I do <laughs> I, I try so um so my next question goes back to this cover that this guy did with this thing he called a gent stick oh, for yeah. a wolf amongst ravens and uh I mean, it kind of talks crap, like, in general about, like, gen and, like, that sound and how simple it is to play. Um, did you guys see that, and what did you think of it at first? Because it's not like that really is representative of your music. First of all, like, I don't know what the guy's <laughs> intention was, and I, I don't think he had any ill intentions at all. Like, and I'm not, we're not mad about anything at all, but it's like what does that thing even sound like you know what i mean because obviously it's not fucking plugged in you know like that thing could just be like they just sound like turds <laughs> yeah. you know so you don't know what it really sounds yeah, like. like you don't know the editing and stuff yeah, yeah. so you, don't, you really don't know what it sounds like also people are like oh this you know the, the, this is all they do like have you heard our music 
Yeah. Like, All the right. people that say that, it's like, have you heard, have you okay. listened to any other right, songs? Hold on, hold on. Because there's also is... a big solo in that song that's not, like, easy, you know? So Yeah, because this was my next question, is A Wolf Monk's Ravens, your guys' lyric video for it, is the most viewed video that you guys have. But the funny thing is, is that that's not very representative of your sound like you know it's not like that's like neo soul or like any of your like really technical stuff so how do you guys feel that that's like that your most popular song isn't it's that like the... representative of like your actual style it's like the oddball out of all of it well you know i think that just kind of happens sometimes like you don't expect like we never know what's gonna happen so like we just put the song out because the guys wanted to do something different and like do this weird like it sort of is rep like no one is doing shit like that you know so it is kind of it is our own thing like well no one was they might be doing it now but um the justin and trent always just wanted to do their own thing they never wanted to follow anyone else like they just wanted to like try something different and do something different i remember when i first heard it, i was like what the shit is this you know like and uh but it was cool so i was like i'm into it because i want to try new things too because if you're playing the same shit over and over again you're gonna get bored and if i get bored i'm not gonna be into it and then what am i what am i here for you know like or what are we here for if we're just yeah. being bored and shitting out songs you know yeah what I mean? like, like i don't think anybody would accuse after the burial of being like a gent band like we get called that a lot but yeah. <laughs> you know like whatever if if i don't care what you call us if you if as long if you like us that's cool if you don't that's cool too you know like to each his own but yeah um, yeah that song was uh that that was an interesting song and it's crazy that it is like the most viewed song and and then you got people saying that we're not technical at all or like there's no talent it's like well maybe we're, if you want to say we're not technical that's cool but as far as talent yeah that's I don't think either of those i true. mean i'm pretty hum i'm very very humble like i don't give a shit about anything but like to, to sit there and call those guys un not you know talentless is that's a pretty bold statement yeah um, this one I didn't write down actually. It's more of a just curious question. Last time I saw you guys, you didn't play Cursing at Kenaten, and I feel like that's normally a crowd favorite. Um, have you guys gone back to playing that or? Yeah, on this one we are. Yeah. Yeah. Was what happened with that? Because when I asked you last time, you just said people didn't seem that into it, and I'm kind of curious how you pick your set list overall now that you have a pretty good amount of music um it's it's always different i think it's never really we never really have like a like a plan of attack like oh we're gonna do this it's kind of like hey what do you guys feel like playing on this tour or like oh you know i want the, let's play this one like no nah, let's try this one like okay yeah but let's do this one because it'll flow with that one and it's just kind of like that it just kind of happens while we're practicing we have a whiteboard and we're like writing the songs down and be like this one we're like nah that's not gonna work because it's too long or so it just kind of happens sometimes but We've been playing Cursing a lot lately um, on the last, well, I mean, we've been off for so long, but before that we were playing yeah. it. Like. Cool, cool. Um, all right, one of the last questions. So 2015 is coming to an end, and people are going to start naming their favorite albums of the year. Is there a band or an album that you really liked this year? Um, see, and everyone's going to be like, well, you know, you, because I, I don't listen to metal, you know, like. And everyone's like, what? You don't listen to metal? Like, they're like, oh, what's your favorite band? And I tell them, and then they get bumped out when I tell them. But um, honestly, for me, it's just an instrumental band called This Will Destroy You. Um, they had a out, I think it came out this year, or maybe it was even last year. Um, and I think it's called Another Language. It's like that, that was like, that was a big part of actually our new record. Because um, I like to listen to instrumental music when I write lyrics. Um, but I have been listening to the uh, new Tesseract album. Oh, Because nice. one of the guys were playing it while we were driving. I'm like, what is this? And they're like, it's a new Tesseract album. And I was like, all right, like pretty good, you know? So um, as far as that, we, we just listen to a lot of hip hop too, so. I've heard a lot of people say that, that they're into rap also. Like Dude. singers of metal bands. Oh yeah, because they have, those guys have the best patterns. And like, if you have a good pattern, it's, that's like the coolest shit. Because, you know, patterns are a big part of, uh, of, of music, you know? So, um. Yeah, we listen to a lot of hip hop. That's like all. When you come in our back room while we're warming up, it's hip hop. So, I'm kind of curious. Have you? Did you check out Reflections new album at all? Cause they're from Minnesota too. Yeah, those guys are rad. Those yeah. dudes. Yeah. Jake those talked are... about like hanging out at your house one time. Yeah. On the last interview. And were stuff. they? 
was it just a recent tour? Uh, yeah, it was like I talked to Jake like two or three weeks ago. Yeah, we yeah. Did, they hung out at my house um, in Florida. I live in St. Petersburg, Florida, so like uh, they hung out for like a couple days and we just broke down and they cool. had a good time. And those are those are my buddies. Those guys are great dudes. Um, all right, man. I guess that's the end. Do you have anything you want to say to your fans, just people out there? Oh uh, yeah, you guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for all the kind words over the last few months. It it really meant a lot to us and. Uh, we want everyone to know that we appreciate everything that everyone has done so far reaching out and, and we see a lot of the um you know the the in memory of justin shirts and and the wristbands and and that really means a lot to all of us and uh we appreciate you guys from seriously from the bottom of our hearts and we'll be back we'll be back next year and, and we're going to continue touring and we have an album coming out soon so hopefully uh you'll hear uh, a little bit of justin in that one as well all right thanks man Time to be done with this. I've been shivering for cold. like the last 10 minutes, yeah, like holding cold. my hand out here. I hope they won't see that in the video. All right, guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. This was Anthony from After, After the Burial. Make sure you check out their new album whenever it comes out. I don't know. Hopefully, they'll put up some new singles and stuff. And uh, thanks for watching.